Hello, I'm Stephen Fry, and I have adored gadgets ever since I was knee-high to a space hopper. Gadgets entertain us. They connect us. They educate us. They impress us. And, of course, sometimes they frustrate us. But whichever way you look at them, they make the world a, a much, much better and, dare I say, happier place. So, come into my world as I, along with some of my friends, reveal a feast of magnificent gadgets that will provide for a fun and stress-free existence. Ah, oh, it's taking me to a happy place. Consider me your humble servant, your knight in crumpled corduroy, your gadget man. Tonight, it's all about the gadgets whose sole purpose in life is to entertain us. Oh, yes, genius. Jeremy Clarkson will help me test the future of pub games. Whoa. Eat my balls. <laughs> and I'll be attempting to turn this building into the biggest video game the world has ever seen. We're about to make history. It's instinctive, isn't it? The moment you wake up, you reach for one of these. Not to send a text message or phone someone. In fact, those are considered rather old hat these days. They're about the fifth and sixth most used functions on smartphones. No, we surf the web, we check into our social networking sites, or we play a game. Whereas once it was birds singing that roused us from our slumber, now it's birds being angry. Over one billion people, one in every six of the world's population, have downloaded the Angry Birds game. Death. Angry Birds is all very well, but um, my current favourite's a, a rather sort of more, I don't know, calming. It's got a solace about it. It's called Contre Jour, and it's, it's, it's a very elegant design. Very beautiful. You have, to, you have to make a hill for yourself and roll down it. Perfect. And yes, while gadgets have many practical uses... Good Lord. Excuse me. What they're best at is entertaining us. Today, even a bathroom can be fun. This futuristic mirror from Hong Kong doubles as a computer display equipped with Wi-Fi, letting you watch TV or browse the internet. One's ablutions have never been so enjoyable. I suppose the most obvious source of technological fun is a video game. It's an incredible $80 billion industry. That's bigger than the entire music business, and it's growing faster than Hollywood. I could play this kind of Atari console, which um, allows me to play classics like Missile Command and Asteroids and that sort of thing. Or I could be more up to the minute with an Xbox and go online and challenge some random American youth to see who can throw the most hand grenades. Take that, Ethan. Oh, no, I'm dead. But the charge that's often levelled against gadget-related fun is that it's so solitary and sedentary. But, you know, it doesn't have to be so. Where better for some sociable exercise than the park? What is careful, sorry. I'm going to test some fun time gadgets for the great outdoors. Well, it's the good old-fashioned municipal park where we come to get our exercise and, of course, to exercise man's best friend. But this man's best friends can be combined in one, not only the lovable dog, but and gadgets combined in these extraordinary animal gadgets. And uh, we're going to try them out with a willing crowd of canine and human testers. Let's see how they work. They're heavy enough, goodness me. Meet the guinea pigs. Or rather, guinea pooches. The first thing you do when you come with the park is play 
the standard game of fetch. You throw sticks and stuff. Well, just choose whichever one you want. See if your dogs respond. They're the judges, not you. Really. Man's best friend loves playing fetch, and there's a selection of devices available to liven things up. The Hyper Dog Tennis Launcher is essentially a catapult. Now watch, this? watch, What's watch this? this, watch it, watch it, watch it. What's this? Watch it, watch it. Look. Look at it. Oh, good, good boy. Girl. Good girl. All right. All the same. Hard to tell. Good girl. Yeah, I like this one. It shoots further than you can throw. So better exercise for the dog in that sense. Yes, absolutely. Place a tennis ball in this doggy driver and you can launch it like Tiger Woods. And playing crazy golf. If all that's too much effort, then this automatic launcher from America might take your fancy. It can fire a ball 45 feet at the touch of a button. Look at it! Look at it. Yeah. Whoa, I got another one. Not everything I've brought along is a hit. Too hard. Now, you probably wondered, like everybody, it's a, as old as Greek mythology, can animals speak and can we understand them? Here's an app that apparently can translate your dog. That's better. Analyzing now, and it's uh, saying, I'm feeling great. Great. Yeah. I'm sure Molly does think that. Right. Done. Did we get something? Analyzing that there could Analyzing. be more. What's it saying? You shall be known as the idiot I live with. Oh, that's nice, Molly. <laughs> I'm going to try it to complete silence and test this app out. Right, it's now done and analysing. Five-second rule. If you're gone for five seconds, your food is mine. So, let's be honest, this bilingual dog translator is just somebody trying to make a fast buck from the app store. How surprising. <laughs> what a shame. Dr. Doolittle will have to remain uh, a children's book and not a reality. That is a shame. The safe stick is less prone to splintering and harbouring bacteria than the normal wooden affair, but Molly makes her thoughts on it quite clear. She's now peeing on it. <laughs> this is a disaster. Now, you may be wondering, where's my little pet? Well, I do have one, and he's very special. In fact, this is the first time he's ever been to Britain. Let's see what they make of him. This remote-controlled critter hails from California and is designed to be a toy for lonely canines. You operate him like so. It will do 20 miles per hour on even bumpy grass. As you can see, if you're a dog, it's clearly the next best thing to humping a sofa. They really are absolutely obsessed with it. There's one gadget I'd like to test, something to help when nature calls. Found a poo here I've been hunting for hours, and I'm using this extraordinary vacuum-powered dog do sucker opera. Oh, God, please work. Oh, oh, that's gruesome. Look, it's going in. But, oh, 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 good gracious. And then, of course, what do you do with it, you may ask? Well, you've got two feet and you... Do that. Oh, the smell is absolutely unspeakable. And there you have a little bag of, oh, no. And it sort of collars it up a bit, but it's just revolting. But, ah, the smell is not there. So look, follow me. We can put it away. Oh, ah, in you go. And goodbye. Thank you. I managed not to touch it. I think in the end, you know, a little shovel or a trowel or something would be better. That was pretty unpleasant. Now, before I leave the park, there's something I've been dying to have a go with. The 21st century version of a humble kite. Pilot fry, black hawk down, here we go. Yes. Oh, brilliant. Hover, hover, hover. This is the Parrot AR drone. You simply download an app to control it, and there's four rotors, a gyroscope, and an accelerometer to keep it all flying. There's also an HD video camera that records the in-flight action, perfect for spying on your neighbors in their back gardens. Go and collect intelligence. I want to know about the enemy forces. Let's try a flip. Oh, yes, genius. Oh, God, I'm good. Oh, yeah. All great fun, but what I'd like to do is find a way of making gadgety games much more social and put them on a much grander scale. So I thought, why not try and devise a game that was bigger, that was more social, that took place outside? And the answer, 
the world's biggest video game. First, I'm going to need a screen big enough to play it on, which means commandeering an entire building, the enormous Millennium Mills in London's Docklands. I've also set the Gadget Man Games Division to work, producing a bespoke game that can be played by a whole crowd of people via their mobile phones. So right now, what we're doing is we're um, setting up all the computers that will be doing the projection work, and we'll also be testing the mobile connections that will be connecting to the game. If they can pull it off, we could be playing our way into the record books. In the meantime, I'm off to a local watering hole to test another batch of fun gadgets. Ah, the traditional English inn. What could be more conducive to fun and games than a selection of fine English ales, a ploughman's lunch, and a gentleman in the corner wheezing into an edition of the Racing Post? As a matter of fact, Henry VII legislated against pub games because he felt that they distracted his men from archery practice. Fortunately, nobody took a blind bit of notice, and the result was a torrent of uh, fruit machines, shove hatney, and quizzes. But what of the 21st century pub game, hmm? I'll need a glamorous assistant to help me investigate, of course, and here comes one now, Jeremy Clarkson. So, Jeremy, you're a, you're a gadget man like myself, aren't you? Hugely. Yep. Yes, if I see something, anything, I buy it immediately, and it never works, ever, <laughs> ever. Have you got the hot tap yet? Yeah. Which yes. permanently delivers boiling water, and then you have people say, I'll just go wash my hands. Sure. <laughs> no! <laughs> I think a quick loosener is in order. Uh, you look like a man in need of a stiff drink. This office, Always. This has ten bottles fixed to it and is an automatic cocktail maker. Already? <laughs> I want it. Yes, you see? Wait, 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 banana oh. daiquiri. Have we got it? Uh, no, I'm afraid there isn't. There's, the, the closest would be a pina colada. Let's or, have a pina colada. All right, there we go. And we go OK. Designed primarily for pub use, you can buy one for the home too, and it takes around 60 seconds to automatically mix a perfect cocktail. The most important thing about this is the designer of it has fitted it with blue lights. Oh, yes, you're a fan of blue lights, aren't you? Blue light says gadget. So but that's important. That's important. And what about the actual taste? Do you think it, it beats the, um, the fancy schmancy um, well, I don't know. You'd mixologists? Need, that, uh... You'd need Tom Cruise standing next to it to do a taste comparison, but it hasn't made something disgusting. No, well, that's good, exactly. Let's be honest. The result of a gadget <laughs> isn't very important. No. The look of it is. It is entirely style over substance. And people who think that that's a bad thing mistake the matter. It's the style is the point. Let the games begin. First up, darts. We're going to use an app called KL Dartboard. As you can see, I've got three darts here. Yeah. You're holding a dartboard. Yeah. This is the magic of the modern world. Oh, we, we can sit there and have a drink and talk. But anyway, whatever. <laughs> we can talk and play cards. Oh, darts. You can't. Yes, you can. Because it's all maths. The phone and tablet connect via Bluetooth. Oh. Right, oh, you don't, scored. You just moved the board. I thought it had gone a treble one, but it's it, just a... Yeah, well, it's close to the treble 20. I'm in the right area. I don't know how you did it. It's oh. a cheat. You big cheater. Throw a dart from your phone, and the accelerometers inside calculate the speed ah. and flight of the dart, so it's surprisingly realistic. Have you thrown all three? I've got one left. Oh, have you? Oh, right, right, pay attention. Sorry. We're playing a game of 301, but that might be slightly optimistic. What goes between 10 and 4? Oh, uh, 18. Uh, sorry, it's, um, it's, uh, blah, blah, blah. what is oh, you that? You go opposite. No. no. Is that uh, a 6? 15. No. 13. Is that a 6? 13. Then it's hiding. So you've got a double 6. So I think we say first double wins. 12. Otherwise, we'd be here forever. You have actually won that, <laughs> and I'm not bothered. <laughs> I've just thought of a brilliant new version of It's real darts. But Piers Morgan. <laughs> that would be good. Well, this, no. So you're not convinced? No. Well, there's another popular oh, yeah. indoor pub game that's become popular in the last oh, 30 years. Let's try you upstairs. Follow me. Right. Well, I've always fancied myself as a bit, oh, of, a, a bit of a hustler. So, yes, billiards. Are you good? Mm, no. It's like I ski. People go, look at that man, he's wearing skiing clothes, he's on a mountain <laughs> wearing skis, but that's not skiing. It's much the same with this. Fair enough. So, off you go. Stripes or what are they called? Uh, spots, I think. Not solids. Not solids, I didn't call them solids. Whoa! Eat my balls! <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Just as I planned. <laughs> well, this is more as I planned. 
I prepare to be amazed. I have electronic augmented reality on my side. Yeah. Now, let's hope oh this works. Look my at this. God. Uh, Some scientists from Queen's University in Canada came up with this amazing prototype training device to make potting balls easier. Oh, look at that! Cameras above the table feed the position of the balls and cue to a computer which works out the angles and projects guidance onto the table to help you line up each shot. The pockets go green when you've lined up correctly, and it also shows the predicted path of the cue ball afterwards, helping with the positioning for the next shot. Ah. Oh, there, it's gone green. Oh. Yes! yes! To see if the technology really works, I'm playing with the help of the machine, while Jeremy's using old-school hand-eye coordination. So I use it without technology. I've got to get that stripey part in. Yeah. Oh! Eat my oh. shot. It certainly helped my game, but one thing the gadget can't do is stop your opponent playing well. How unfortunate. You've been hiding your light under a bushel all these years. I genuinely don't understand this. <laughs> the technology is impressive, but it was good old-fashioned luck that decided the game. Side on this. Do you have Jeremy's side? foul on the black meant yeah. I won. <laughs> black is in. I believe that is the end of the game. Um, well, thank you very much. Um, a pleasure. Come to my aid in an important way. I like Projecting the start things, thing, yeah. and I'd buy it just so <laughs> that I could go. Watch this. <laughs> then I wouldn't know how it worked, and we'd then go and have a cocktail from the machine with the blue lights. Exactly, and we might watch television. And as you probably know, like everything else, televisions almost every six months improve themselves. <laughs> Could this extraordinary glasses-free 3D telly be the future of TV? Feast your eyes on lenticular 3D HD TV. Well, just my eyes, sadly, everybody watching at home isn't able no, to see the three-dimensional nature of it. What's interesting is it actually has a camera at the bottom, rather like a sort of connect or something might have a camera. What it does is it can detect up to nine pairs of eyeballs. So what it's doing is actually adjusting the image to your own eyeballs so that it appears oh, really? so 3D. It's... So, yeah, it is actually reading you and giving you a particular slant of the pixels such that you might get a, a no 3D way. image. Yeah, that's, that's how it works. It is extraordinary that you can watch it without glasses, because obviously you don't have to feel foolish wearing those glasses. Even if they look like sunglasses, they're a bit silly, aren't they? No, you look silly. So let's imagine we're playing a quiz game and you've won the star prize, which is whichever one you choose of what we've had today. So that can be the cocktail mixer. Mm -hmm. It can be the darts and the dartboard, my lovely. All right, my lovely, yeah. And it can be, it can be the augmented reality pool, my darling. Barbecue, okay, so. Okay, my lovely, yeah. 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 And or are you being Derek Beatty? <laughs> I don't, I can't, I'm not sure. <laughs> but I actually have the cocktail machine, because, of course, I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> well, no, I liked it, actually. Blue yeah. light's very good. And the blue light. That's yours to keep. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Now, playing around with your mates in the pub is obviously sociable, but it's nothing compared to what we're about to see. It's time for our attempt to create the biggest, most social video game in the world. My team of Gadget Man eggheads have been designing and building a game that should let lots of players join in on a massive scale. But will it all work? The plan is to turn this disused warehouse into the world's biggest TV screen. But how? The answer is to project across using uh, six of these babies. They're enormous, two banks of three. They're about 40 times more powerful than the kind of projector you'd use in a typical home cinema. And they need to be, because they've got to throw across 200 metres of Thames water onto the facade of the famous old flour mill. This is the first time we've worked at such a large scale in a building. It's quite surreal seeing your own graphics up on the building 100 feet tall. So, we've got some scale, now I need to make it social. I put out a call to action on Twitter asking for some volunteers to help me, and a keen bunch soon turned up to find out what on earth was going on. Well, I'm here at Mission Control, and you can see here the, the grid is um, divided into 40 squares, randomly distributed amongst them are five glowing keystones, and the aim is to find and destroy those. The game is rather like a giant multiplayer version of battleships, but here every player in the team has to hit a keystone for it to be destroyed. Once all the keystones have been blown up, the building will collapse and the game is won. So the race is on to uncover the squares and find the keystones. It's kind of like battleships, but in 
a but stream. Better. Yeah, but better. And on a building on a massive scale. I love the whole sort of thing where it's like massive projector. It just brings a whole new element to the game, really. The players are split into two teams. I'll be in team one, who'll be playing on the left-hand side of the building. Team two will play on the right. Short ones at the front, tall ones at the back. That's a good, good system. With 50 players logged on to a web address via their smartphones, the system seems to be holding up, and they're ready to tap in their moves. All right, are you ready? Yes. 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 We're about to make history. This is the world's biggest computer game. So, lights, camera, let's play! Top left, OK, who's going for top, top left? left? That was me. OK, two search, one, two. I'll search, two. I'll hit the target. Come on, one less focus on that, guys. One, two, three, go. A couple of people kind of assumed, like, leadership roles and just kind of said, right, you guys do this, this and this, and then we'll all do this. Anyone can get that second line in, third up. Go. So you can see that one's glowing up there. Oh, there's one glowing in yeah. the That's a keystone, yeah, definitely. We all kind of rallied together and got it, and it worked really well. Oh, they've got another one. Go on, Team 2, you're doing hopelessly. You're way behind us. Despite my efforts to derail them, four minutes into the game, there's nothing between my team on the left and Team 2 on the right. This is going to be close. Oh, it's, it's tense. Far right, second down. You said that one was a brilliant one. I know, it's like stressful. Oh, I know, it's really tense, isn't it? The trick is to stay focused and calm amongst all the noise and excitement, but that's far from easy. Oh, oh, five, five, oh, they're on five. Okay, right, guys. Oh, dear. Oh. Oh, right, okay. Very, very close. They're just. Oh. Let's go. Oh, oh, my goodness, there. I think they're beating Congratulations! Very close, though. Oh, my goodness. I think we can call this game a success, though, can't we? Yeah. It actually engaged us enormously. We cooperated, we communicated. It was a lot better than just being alone remotely in a locked, smelly room with a no entry sign on it and a black t shirt and a weird name. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's really into multiplayer games. They're, you know, the future already. So something like this, where you get to utilise like a really big space and people all coming together, it was so much fun that I can definitely see this taking off in the future. This is only the very, very dawn of the whole co concert. Oh, you know, I would totally go on a team. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it has genuine. It has a genuine yeah. future. The concept has been proved. Taking a computer game into the open and playing it on a massive scale has been an unmitigated success. It's been sociable, inclusive, and has turned entertainment into an event. Believe me, you have just watched the next big thing in having fun. That, in my book, is mission accomplished.